This meeting of the Tyler ISD Board of Trustees was previously called to order. The presence of a quorum has been established. The meeting's been duly called. The notice of the meeting's been posted in the time and manner required. Monthly meetings of the board are designed to conduct the business of governing the school system in public. However, this is not a meeting to interact with the public. We welcome you as guests to observe and listen. We do have a scheduled time within the agenda for the public to address the board. First item on our agenda will be prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we come before thee this evening with thanksgiving in our heart. We're thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to be able to transact the business of our school district to impact the lives of our children in a positive way. And then we are thankful, Lord, for our parents who entrust their children to us day after day. This is Veterans Day, Lord, so we're thankful for the men and women who have served in the various armed forces and who many have given their lives on the battlefield. And then there are those who have returned home, maimed or lame, but they came back, Lord. And for this, we are thankful. Continue to bless them and keep them as we appreciate the service that they have rendered. We ask now, Lord, if you will just guide us in all of our ways. There is so much going on in this world today. At times, I feel like there's more hate than love, more discord than unity. And I know that you are our Heavenly Father, and you know all about us, and you know every situation. So I'm asking in the mighty name of Jesus that you would just heal the land, heal the hearts of the people, Lord, that we might one day become one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. We pray for those whose homes uh, have been destroyed in California, we pray for those who have lost all that they had, and yet, Lord, you bless them to keep their lives. But then there are others who have lost their lives, and we can't seem to understand all of the mysteries of life and death. But we know, Lord, that you know, and we just ask your blessings upon all of these families because it's not over yet. The fires are still burning. And while fires are burning and lives are being lost and homes destroyed, Show us now, Lord, how not to destroy one another, but to work together and to walk hand in hand so that the Tyler Independent School District will continue to be a better place where we might educate the minds, the hearts, and the souls of our children. We pray for the peace that passes all understanding. And we thank you, Lord, for this board and for these administrators as we continue to work together. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. We have no action coming out of executive session. First item then, number seven, approval of minutes. Any discussion or changes to the minutes as presented? If not, I'll accept the motion. Move we approve the minutes. Mr. Washington, thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Special recognitions. Good evening, board members and Dr. Crawford. Tyler ISD is proud to announce that our district students of the month for November. We would like to recognize Manaya Cooper, a first grade student at Griffin Elementary School, as our elementary student of the month. Our secondary student of the month is Joshua Silva, an 11th grade student at Robert E. Lee High School. Now, if you will please join me in watching a brief video about these two outstanding students. Tyler I 
ASD would like to recognize the efforts of our two district students of the month. These students are selected based on six criteria. Academic performance, effort, character, behavior, citizenship, and attendance. We would like to recognize Manaya Cooper, a student at Griffin Elementary, as our elementary student of the month. Manaya likes being a Griffin Bulldog and enjoys being a first grader at her school. Because I like to do math. I like to help people with their homework. <laughs> Mrs. Melissa Smith, Manaya's teacher, says Manaya shows a great love for learning and always gives her best to the classroom instruction. Miss Smith had a chance to ask Manaya what she wants to be when she grows up. A doctor. A doctor? When you're a doctor, are you going to take care of me and Miss uh, Thompson and Miss Smith and Mr. Ladd? Yes. You are, okay. Our secondary student of the month is Joshua Silva an 11th grade student at Robert E. Lee High School. He says his recognition means a great deal to him. It's been really cool to be acknowledged and um, though, you know, I absolutely have no like intention to take full credit because Doyle and all my officers, they've done so much, but it feels nice to be nominated as well. But I just want to make sure that what I'm doing is a full case of everybody doing it. And it's been really great to work with so many good people. Joshua paints a much bigger picture of what it takes to be recognized as Student of the Month. I'll be honest with you, I'm not the strongest academic student, I'm not the best scholar. I'm, I'm you know, I'm mindful enough to acknowledge that, however, that's not what um, qualifies you to be a Student of the Month. What qualifies you is to have, to facilitate change and for the better, at, at least at your school. I think that's what, I think that's what it would help. Joshua is fond of one particular organization at LEAD. Best Buddies is a national organization. Um, it works to facilitate one-on-one -on -one, uh, friendships between um, general education and special education students. Um, here at LEAD, um, Mr. Doyle, um, he did the program at UT Austin and he wanted to bring it here to Robert E. Lee. And, um, and so far, you know, with our turnout, we've had we only predicted at least 30, you know, we weren't predicting nearly as many students to join, you know, general education students. So far, our program as a whole has 70 students. Joshua says he is interested in a number of universities that will help him pursue a career in music therapy. Sam Houston, Georgia have, they're one of the top ranked schools in the country for um, music therapy. They're recommended by the Music Therapy Association of America there fantastic schools and that's the career I'm looking to pursue and you know I'm really excited to get to apply to those schools and see where they can take me in this career. Congratulations to these students for their hard work, dedication, and leadership in the classroom. Their efforts are being recognized through TIC TV and sponsorship by Christus Trinity Mother Francis Health System. Okay, board members, I'd like to introduce you to our elementary student of the month, Manaya Cooper.
and our secondary student of the month, Joshua Silva. Next, please join me in congratulating our November Teacher of the Month, Ms. Suzette Richardson. Ms. Richardson is the careers teacher at Three Lakes Middle School, and the campus says she goes up and beyond in everything she does. Ms. Richardson, if you would please come forward. tonight, Tyler ISD is proud to recognize several of our employees for their part in assisting in a recent emergency situation. Following a volleyball term in Hallsville, our bus drivers and coaches were approached by law enforcement and were informed of an Amtrak accident close by. There were several passengers that needed medical transport. The employees, our employees, assisted in evacuating passengers and crew from the train accident, and our drivers transported passengers to an emergency shelter. So we want to recognize them tonight for their efforts and for the character they showed during this situation. Thank you to the following employees, and if you will please come forward as I call your name. We have coach and driver Angela Moon from John Tyler High School. Driver Joe Skillerns from John Tyler High School. Coach Jessica Moss from Robert E. Lee High School. <laughs> Coach Hillary Schaefer from Robert E. Lee High School. and coach Karina Riste from Robert E. Lee High School. Okay, board members, thank you. If you please be seated. this time we have one final recognition and I would like to introduce Dr. Bill Rutherford with TASB for a final recognition. I'm sorry Reverend but yes I lied to you a few minutes ago. I was quote not in the neighborhood. I'm here for a different reason. You're forgiven. Members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Crawford, 
Uh, my name is Bill Rutherford, and I'm with the Texas Association of School Boards in Austin. I'm also Program Manager for Leadership TASB. It's my pleasure to be here tonight to recognize one of your colleagues who has recently finished the course of study known as Leadership TASB. Leadership TASB was begun in 1993, almost 30 years ago, when we stop and think about it. And currently, we remain to be the only program of its kind in the nation. We like to say copied by some, but never bettered by any. Uh, we also look at it today that uh, typically we have, for every four people that apply for Leadership TASB, only one is selected. So when we say it's a highly selective program, it actually truly is. The commitment is a 10-month long time period in which 36 members make up a class. And those 36 members commit for 10 months to make five different site visits, visits numerous schools around the state of Texas. They represent districts of all sizes, all geographic regions, from the very wealthy to the poorest districts, from the very largest to the very smallest of districts. Leadership TASME <clears throat> asks participants to work a little harder, be challenged with new thoughts, and renew their commitment to make a difference to the children of the state of Texas, and in your case, to the children of Tyler ISD. Tonight, Reverend Hager joins the ranks of more than 800 other graduates who are members of the Alumni Association. And I'm pleased to present Fritz his certificate of membership as a lifetime member in the Leadership TASB Alumni Association. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was surprised to see Bill when I walked in here. Thanks for coming, Bill. Uh, next up, 30 minutes public participation. We have no speakers signed up. Item 10, goal one, early literacy update. Yeah, throughout the year, we have different um, updates provided for continuous improvement. Uh, this has been a tradition now for over 18 months, or actually two years now in Tyler ISD. Is that right? Two years, 26, November of 2016. Mm -hmm. It's been two years since we went through Lone Star Governance training together. Um, tonight we have a, a video that provides a program update instead of someone just talking um, at the table. And um, if you have questions after, oh, you're celebrating? If you have questions afterwards, Dr. Hansen would love to respond after this short video at the table. Okay.
so it was a little different. Um, instead of just, again, sitting at the table and telling you everything we're doing, just a little documentation there of, of what's been going on, a little bit lighter than what we're normally doing, looking at data and whatnot. But some of the action behind some of the, the uh, or excuse me, some of the documentation behind the, liter behind the literacy actions that we're taking as a staff, um, you saw a lot of that is done after hours. Um, so we have a uh, board we can report that your staff and your, your faculty are committed to tackling this issue that we have in regard to the, the challenges that we have and they're putting in the extra time and effort um, owning what they're, they're doing. And I think that's been a change up from what we've done in, the, in years past. Mm -hmm. um, they do it under outside of the contract. Um, uh, so, you know, the compensation is, is, is minimal, if any, to some of them, but not all of them. And so I just wanted to uh, provide this for you tonight and appreciate the, the staff and, and doing that. If you have any questions, we'll be certainly able to answer those at this time. Any questions, board? Comments? Okay. Okay. Moves us to item number 11, business, legal, finance, consent agenda. Uh, we have no items to pull. Is there any discussion of any of these items? Just some highlights within that, Reverend okay. Hager, real quick. Um, uh, three of those are for your annual, uh, that have to do with their annual um, investment actions on behalf of the district as far as identifying who those investment officers are. That's Ms. Bjork, Executive Director, or excuse me, CFO, and then our Executive Director of Finance, Mary Russell. Um, also, choosing who we use for investment. Uh, as well as TCG Advisors is one group, along with uh, Lone Star and some other uh, various traditionally uh, used by other school systems. And you also have policies that are there as well that we've been working on since July 17th through 19th. You've had your first reading. This is the second and final reading. Any questions for Dr. Crawford? I'll accept a motion then for approval of a through G on item 11. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, I move that we approve Roman numeral 11, A through G. Thank you, Reverend Mason. Second. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> item number 12, curriculum instruction consent agenda, no items to pull. Any discussion on any of these items? Reverend Hager, some highlights um, in this are our partnership with the University of Texas at Tyler for our Team One initiative, uh, developing a diverse leadership cadre by sending them through the Masters of Education Administration program there with principal certification, uh, partnering with uh, the Tyler ISD in regard to, to, to growing our own. Excited about that. Y'all have approved the financing for that. This is the actual memorandum of understanding. Um, you also have some clinical experiences with uh, UT Tyler College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Um, you also have some internship opportunities with uh, Brookshire's Grocery Company uh, as far as their, for their for our farm tech students, excuse me, to work with their pharmacy, and then Texas Spine and Joint Hospital for some of our uh, medical uh, health, health sciences students that are there as well. I uh, also appreciate the community uh, being members of the SHAC committee and uh, instructional material committee members as well, made up of staff and uh, I believe uh, community members as well. If there are no questions or comments or items to pull, I'll accept a motion for on uh, item 12, A through H. I move we approve. Thank you, Mr. Washman. Second. Thank you, Ms. Washington. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Item 13, superintendent and staff reports. It's been a fun year. A year ago at this time, uh, we were presenting to the board, as we're waiting for the PowerPoint to load up, we were presenting to the board, out of way, Mr. Bowden. Um, we'd been charged by the Board of Trustees in May of 2017, or excuse me, I think February of 2017, uh, as we were preparing for the bond election to, uh, to provide a, um, uh, a redesign of our middle school programming. And while we were doing that, we took on a, some extra um, projects in regards to, to choice and innovation across our school system. 
along with um, redrawing of our boundaries, which have not had, a, had not had a comprehensive redraw for 50 years. Next slide, please. So there's your timeline. This was approved in February of 2018, and we actually launched, launched this August at the start of the school year. And again, the, the different uh, labels that we provided were our comprehensive schools. Next slide. Um, comprehensive schools are the schools that we pretty much grew up in, but have certainly improved and modernized since those uh, since we all went to school. You have the traditional school setting, the featuring the band, the athletic standard extracurriculars, uh, traditional core and elective classes with zone attendance. This was provided to you uh, at your board spot if you're wanting to follow along as well. And there's the list of our comprehensive schools. It's uh, all elementary campuses, uh, our middle schools as far as the regular programming goes, John Tyler and Lee. Next slide. Our choice schools, we all remember the, the, what we presented here in February and what they are. Uh, those examples are MST Magnet uh, at Moore. Uh, Caldwell actually added uh, sixth grade this year. We're planning on adding seventh grade next year, eighth grade the following year for middle school programming in the arts. Tyler Tech right now has approximately 40 to 50 students that are um, remaining the entire day at Career Technology Center. Um, our vision and dream is to grow that program as another choice option uh, for maybe uh, those that are 9 through 12 or possibly 10 through 12. Early College High School this year will actually graduate their first graduating senior class. Um, they were an A-rated school this past school year in the new accountability system. And then Rise Early Graduation is also another program that we're extremely proud of. Uh, we've already graduated um, a handful of students this year. Uh, because of rise early graduation. Uh, it's in the double digits. I don't want to lie to you and give you some inf inf misinformation, but I want to say 12 to 15 already. Um, Mr. Sanchez has actually been deployed to, a, to Austin for a meeting down there, and he has that on the tip of his tongue. He told me, but I just I can't seem to remember that. Something we are developing, um, K through five STEM magnets, um, schools within schools. Um, we have had one elementary school approach us about beginning one, a STEM-focused portion inside of their own school, similar to what Moore is doing. Uh, again, we're trying to get that K-12 strand for STEM education. Um, right now, we don't have that in our elementary schools, uh, but it is something that we're considering. We're not fully ready to bring to the board yet, uh, but again, we think that that's a, uh, certainly a, a a challenging and rigorous pathway that all of our community may be interested in sending their kids to if we do it correctly. I'm looking for at least two elementary schools to partner with. We've got one that's, uh, that's, that's raised their hand saying that they're excited about that. Next slide. Our innovative schools are, are zone schools with non-traditional learning models or logistics and that could be year-round schools, it could be schools that are uh, that have alternative staffing models. Um, in other words, uh, some of the traditionally hard to staff schools uh, have had a hard time attracting and keeping teachers. There may be some um, achievement uh, incentives uh, attached to that, talking about real dollars. I know that we've had some um, demagoguery floating around this last election cycle talking about giving all teachers a $10,000 raise. Um, that's physically impossible without additional funding provided to us by the state of Texas, but there are some things we can do maybe internally uh, to move some money around to do them in, in pockets. Um, you know, you're talking about high-tech programming, and I'm not talking about just technology, I'm just talking about innovative things that are being done that are outside the traditional school offering. Some of our innovative schools, Hogg Middle School has a, a leadership focus this year. Um, single, uh, single gender, excuse me, single gender classrooms is another idea. Our Career Technology Center can be considered an innovative school along with Bo Shears. And then um, our, our outstanding partner, Rose City Summer Camps, it's a five, operating 501c3, um, is something that's not being done uh, in other places. Uh, certainly that is outside of the, the regular school year, but it is something that we're doing that is innovative and that is affecting our students as well and something that we could potentially capitalize and expand upon. Some things that we're considering and are in development, um, uh, expansion of our K-8 language immersion expansions. You know, we do a good job in certain elementary schools 
um, with the dual language program. When you get to the middle years, those things seem to kind of just disappear and we just check the box of having a foreign language maybe offered in middle school. Um, but to get really effective and successful, we need a K-12 offering. And it's not probably just gonna be Spanish. There are other languages that we are considering. Uh, we kind of dipped our toe in the water last year about some, some different um, opportunities with languages other than English or Spanish. But we bit off a lot last year and we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't take on that much water. Um, and then obviously we've talked about some of this, but now that we we're out of accountability jail, what are some cool things that we can do and where are some dollars located that, that maybe we can consider um, the administration to put in front of the board? And certainly Senate Bill 1882 has some opportunities out there that if you do partner with a, a 501c3, um, you might be able to access some, some funding additional than what um, the state already offers, including but not limited to the possibility of considering some year-round schooling. Um, and just so the public knows, we do some year-round schooling at both years, but that's pretty much done within a 177-day calendar. What this administration is, is envisioning, uh, but not yet ready, prepared to bring to the board yet, is to actually talk about additional instructional days um, to assist students that, that are uh, at pockets of our school system that are affected by the summer slide. Um, we're talking, you know, going from 177 instructional days to possibly 204. That's a dream of ours. We just got to find the, uh, the, the, uh, the resources to make that happen. Next slide. Here's some of our updates uh, that we have in regard to the, uh, the Pathfinder initiative. Um, things that we're looking at right now are enrollments, um, uh, transportation, how we're marketing this, and then what are the actual magnet applications occurring. Um, we did have some small surprises at the beginning of school um, enrollments for one. Um, we did have a little burst of, uh, of kindergartners that, that decided they wanted to, to choose Andy Woods Elementary School that did not pop up during kindergarten roundup during the spring. And that was a nice little surprise because it made our enrollment go up. But at the same time, we had not projected that. Um, we have staffed Andy Woods Elementary School appropriately to, uh, to do that, but that was a nice little surprise. And then some of our bus routes. Um, when you have not had a comprehensive redraw of your attendance zones, um, we knew that this could happen, but we didn't know to what magnitude. Those same transportation routes have been running for the last 50 years. So if you've had someone driving a school bus, I know I'd be on autopilot. Uh, and, and maybe d new routes would be a little bit foreign uh, to, to me um, as well. Uh, that's why you probably saw the superintendent hopping on a bus uh, the Friday, the first week of school to make sure we, were, we actually had a bus going into that <clears throat> zone. And um, along with using our GPS to making sure that we're doing that as well. So those were some small surprises. Um, we do have an event coming up, uh, y'all might be interested in, the Pathfinder Expo, where every one of our schools and our campuses and programs will have a, a booth at the Career Technology Center on December 1st. I think it's 9 to 12, is that correct, Don? Yes, sir. Santa will be there. Um, milk and cookies? Hot chocolate and cookies. Milk and cookies, hot chocolate too. Okay, um, to, to attract some folks there. It's, it's, it's pretty much a fair and to, to showcase what we have, to get information about certain campuses. Of course, we do individual family tours at each one of our campuses if folks are thinking about a possible transfer or choosing one of our choice or innovation programs. But this will be a neat little showcase of the school system as well. You're always interested, the board is, about magnet transfer application dates. That was something that came up. Last November, December, January, and February, well, we can report to you. Just remember the number one, February 1, March 1, and April 1. Uh, magnet, uh, excuse me, magnet transfer applications and all transfer applications actually open up on February 1. It closes on March 1, and we'll notify parents of, a, of an approval or denial by April 1st, okay? Uh, some of the things that we're developing, in case you're wondering, we're still looking at transportation hubs for magnets. 
Um, one thing that we talked about, you know, true equity in the system um, would provide some opportunity for students if they did, if, if transportation was an issue for them, um, to provide that from the different quadrants of the, the school system. Um, certainly we can't do pickups at every driveway for every magnet student, we realize that, but there might be an opportunity for us to, to, bus, uh, cert, uh, to bus kids there. We certainly need the participation numbers to be there as well. We can't just say that we're only going to bus three kids from Flint to go to Caldwell. We need the numbers to be there for, to, for us to make that happen so that our tax dollars are used efficiently and effectively. Um, we're also looking at some small boundary adjustments. Those were some of the surprises that came, that came with us. We're, we're not ready to bring those to you all yet, but there may need to be some movement here and there. Um, we did have fidelity to using bigger streets um, in our school, in our, within our boundaries, but they, it's caused some, some overages in some of our campuses as well. Um, not ready to bring that to you all yet, but we're, we're, we're certainly thinking about that. And then our focus on accurate present projections. We, we don't think we'll be as surprised next year uh, like we had the Andy Woods kindergarten surprise this year um, because our neighborhoods are pretty, um, or our boundaries will be pretty settled by then. It won't be new. We'll have a year into this and we'll be able to uh, do a little bit better projection. There's your Pathfinder update. Next year will be a video. I have a question. Yes. Is, uh, let's say I have a daughter who's in the first grade, age six, and my daughter can read at the third grade level. Mm -hmm. Is my daughter restricted to remain in first grade? You're talking about a vanguard type of. You know, I brought this yeah, up no, before. We, you I and really I both like talked to see about us this. Do this. Yep. We are encouraging our principals to have these thoughts and to bring these items before us. Um, we would like that to be a grassroots, we're encouraging them, we'd like that to be a grassroots initiative, someone who would take on that vanguard and do some of those things. Um, we do, on a very limited basis, advance students, um, but it's a very, a very limited basis. But I'm with you, Rev. Uh, I think that's a way to increase some of our um, end goals that we may have as far as national merit uh, finalists and national merit semifinalists. Um, and to get more kids in the Duke TIP program, which is a whole nother conversation of us uh, trying to improve some of those outcomes as well. Uh, so, yes. You know, we spend a lot of time and effort and money uh, with students who, are, uh, who need to be brought up to mm -hmm. a level of expectancy and, of course, exceed. But I would really like to see us concentrate our efforts as well, more of our efforts, and those higher achievers who can even go even higher. Yes, ma'am. Um, and that's where I think your K-5 STEM opportunities will be, those magnets that we described. Um, because, you know, th those exceptional students that you're describing are exceptional. Yes. And, and they do need the challenge. And the old model of gifted and talented um, that we probably need to inspect and take a look at um, may not be what we need to keep doing. We've traditionally done it because we've always done it, but it might be one of the things that we need to do differently. Um, uh, so we'll be bringing something back to you in regard to, to, to make, taking care of those high achieving kids as well. Um, you're right, we've spent a lot of time and effort in remediation and intervention and we still do that and we think we've got a formula that that works. So now it is time to also focus on those high achieving kids and advanced students yeah. as well. Thank it may you. be that uh, the child is a higher achiever in reading language arts and may need to remain at that sure. grade level for math. But if we can excel or help them excel even more, I sure would love to encourage that. Sure. All right, thank you. Yes, we spoke a bit about bus routes and it just reminded me, I think it was last spring, we kind of bought some software that we were going to outfit our buses with to make, uh, make for some efficiencies in our bus route. And did, did that get installed, I guess, over the summer? Are we using that currently yeah, so to? GP, we, we've, we've, we've bought security uh, a couple of years ago, cameras and high def um, audio. We have GPS. Um, systems that are in place so we know in real time where buses are located. We also have as a component of that the ability to track individual students on those buses. Um, 
obviously having a card um, that the, the young child is a young student is responsible for sometimes doesn't always work out because they may not have it on them at all times so yes those systems are in place they are working um, they are very effective for us you know in this time of driver sword shortage nationwide I think those technological advances help us make up for some some issues that we have maybe in personnel to where no school systems are being able to hire any bus drivers the economy is too good um, but yes I can provide more information for you on that but they are okay. very effective and again the first week of school when we were getting reports that we did not have a bus going to a certain location we could go back and identify that that, that there was one day mm -hmm. that we did not have that which the news media turned into <laughs> big travesties and multiple days in one day and we have proof of that so yes sir it's working installed thank you efficiencies any other questions or comments? One before you ask for dismissal. Okay, well, we still have still District not. of Innovation. I said just before you yeah. ask for dismissal. Okay, great. <laughs> so, item B. Yeah, item B, um, we are a District of Innovation that was passed a couple mm -hmm. of years ago, led by, it was a community effort. We appreciate those that, that provided that. Um, as part of that district of innovation, we have it written in there that we would report to the board um, the amount of district of innovation teacher certifications that are granted. Um, House Bill 1842 was passed in eighth, the eighth legislative session. That was in the 1880s. Um, I think the 78th le legislative session um, allows Texas public schools with a with uh, with good academic ratings to obtain exemptions from certain provisions in the Texas Education Code. So this is one of those right there. And um, Mr. Jones, refresh my memory, Ms. Kano, district-wide, uh, approximately how many vacancies we have right now? I would say three. Three? Yes. OK. We've got some, we've got some transitioning taking place uh, uh, as of this week, but uh, that's where we are. OK. Um, and again, we don't just throw them into a classroom. Uh, I, I know Reverend Mason to have any vacancies is all is 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 crazy old school as you and I are but we're dealing with a different era of education so I think three is pretty good um, I don't even know how, I don't know if that even represents a any represent a percent so we, we feel pretty good about it right now um, in case you're wondering any of these teachers that are hired aren't just thrown into a classroom they're provided mentors they're provided support from our professional development department. Ms. Hiddle does a good job with that. Um, our principals do a great job in nurturing uh, these teachers onto success. But there's the list of the individual campuses and how many District of Innovation certif certifications we're providing. Again, community that's listening and that's in, that's in attendance tonight, um, they do have to have a degree, and a degree in the field that, that we're asking them to actually serve in. Um, but they have not gone through a teacher prep program or possibly have not passed an actual standardized high stakes test on one day. They might be in the process of doing that or going through an alternative certification program at the same time. And that provides an educated person in our classrooms for our students. Right. Any questions? No, you could stay on district. Uh, uh, Mr. Martinez asked, they don't have to get on to get the traditional certification. You can stay on a district of innovation uh, certification, local certification, every year, but you give up some of your Chapter 21 uh, term contract. You're only going to be probationary every year. So we encourage these individuals to continue on with certification. certification. And we do have to review this uh, here. I think Dr. Hansen in the next two years I believe yes. yeah so we will review this and whether or not it's working right now just as far as the data goes with three vacancies this time of year I think putting a degreed individual uh, teaching our kids and we love our substitutes but again there's no there's there's nothing that replaces a contracted individual um, a degreed individual in front of our students full-time every day when a teacher goes through 
our certification, our district certification program, that's a certification that just works inside of Tyler ISD. It's not something that's portable for them. That's correct. It's not portable. Um, so we are investing in those individuals, and they may go over to Maybank, and they may not be a district of innovation and be eligible. Um, some school districts, some school systems only do career technology education as that certification. And we had that before we actually brought this on board. We wrote our DOI plan so that we could go and hire that retired engineer to come teach some STEM courses. Mm -hmm. um, that retired, <laughs> or not retired, but maybe that, that, that college uh, student that just went, and got, just went and got a degree in English um, and maybe was gonna go be, be a journalist and then Corey, they didn't, didn't work out for him. So they can come teach for us. It's working out for you, Corey, you're doing a good job. Um, but in saying that, those are the types of individuals that we have here. Um, and I really appreciate our community letting us write our DOI plan that way. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, just quickly, um, Jen, our internal auditor asked if we would, if I would place one of these at each one of your seats. And it's just a year-end summary of the internal audit, auditing services that she has rendered. So we want to make sure you all take a look and see that she is working. Uh, Ms. Martinez and I had the pleasure of working along with her. We are your representatives, and she is doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Yes, sir. Future business, Dr. Crawford. Board workshop December 6th. We do have an item or two for you at that workshop. Um, and then December 17th, the regular school board meeting. Um, I do encourage everyone to Go you say, go ahead. Caldwell Musical is this week, <laughs> Thursday and Friday, What's 6 p.m. What's it called? James and the Giant Peach. 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. That's right. Thursday and Friday. It is a big peach. <laughs> <laughs> Any John, other future business, Dr. Crawford? Yep, John Tyler football. This home week. playoff game starts the, the Cujo run. Yeah. Um, at Rose Stadium, 7 o'clock Friday night. Playing Tomball. 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 Long way to come. Yeah. yeah. To get beat. Oh. We <laughs> hope. <laughs> we hope. Locker room material. Yeah. There he goes. <laughs> okay. That concludes our agenda tonight. I will accept a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Bergfeld. I have a second. Second. Oh, thank you, Reverend Mason. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.